Hey guys, back with another review. I don't plan on doing these for every single show, but I'm doing this one for two reasons. One, it's kind of an important show. Last match of the year and everything. Two, my history of John video is taking much longer than I thought it was going to. I It took me like two weeks to get the, uh, the timeline that I wanted to do, and then it's been taking me a couple of days to write this script. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully I'm not hyping this video up more than what I'm going to be able to deliver. So, all right, let's get to the review. The end of the year and stardom puts on one last hurrah. This show really felt like a resolution while also promising a better year. So many awesome things to cover in this show and one not so awesome, but don't worry, it's not as bad as when Mayu got injured. In this show, we get a title change, two new outfits, a resolution to a storyline that's been going on for months, and a setup for not only one title match later on, two. So before I get into it, I'm just going to say this match, or this whole show, I should say, was very enjoyable. Every single match, and I recommend all of you to go watch it. Let's start with the first match. Typical opening match, it is between Hanan and Natsumi versus... Hina and Rina. Now, I do not say typical opening match as a bad thing because I am actually very fond of what the opening matches can accomplish. They can do one of two things. One, be super amazing to pump up the crowd for the rest of the show, or two, be subpar, usually involving the rookies, and I think that's also another good thing because the show only has up to go from there. The one main thing I got from this match is that Rena is super adorable. Uh, she she is going to be a superstar one day if she decides to stick with this. The only problem that could stop her, though, is she seems to be having too much fun. Not that having fun doing your job is a bad thing, but she seems to be smiling more than is necessary. And for certain people, that could work. You know, like, I could see Ruka having that kind of gimmick, a jolly green giant, you know, sort of say. But I feel like right now it's acceptable. They're, you know, what, 12, I think? They just had their birthday recently. So, whatever. I am super looking forward to their progression, and I wish them all the best. Next match, the flag and mask match between Samire and Azumi. Now, this match has been months in the making, and honestly, it might not even have been necessary. Uh, they could have solved this with the last match that the winner was supposed to take everything from, or the match before that, but I am glad we got one more match, because anytime time Azumi and Samire are in the ring together, it is amazing. Going into this, I believe we all kind of knew that... This was not going to be some kind of technical marvel. There really isn't a way to put Natsu Samire and technical marvel and match all in the same sentence and have it make sense unless you put the word not in there. Now, that's not a, a knock at Samire because Samire is one of my favorite people to watch this year. But she is just a slightly below average to average wrestler. There's nothing wrong with that. She makes up for it by being one of the most entertaining and charismatic people in the history of wrestling. So, eh, win-win. This match, on the flip side, was purely story. That is all this match was. It was Azumi and Samire going at each other with words. And I actually enjoy these types of matches quite a bit. They're not the most entertaining to watch in terms of wrestling, but I feel like they have their own purpose, and I'm really enjoying these two's dynamic together. The important thing here is that Azumi beat Samire, solidifying herself as a mid-card threat. Now, Samire could be anywhere between the low mid-card to mid-mid-card in terms of where she places in stardom. And for Azumi to finally beat her in a singles match, that means 
that Azumi might be getting the push that we've been waiting for her to get this coming year. She could very well be a mid-card threat from now on. And what solidifies that thought even more happens later on. I'll talk about it when it happens, but something that happens later on in the match makes me think that my thought process on this is actually correct. And I really hope it's true. With the outcome of this match, Azumi beats Samire, meaning that she, once and for all, gets back her mask and flag that were stolen months and months ago by Samire. The problem is, is that Azumi actually forgot to take the mask at the end. Uh, she did later post to Twitter showing that she went and stole it from Now's bag and fought off Now to get it back. So she does have her flag and mask back, which we actually see the flag later on during the main event. So on to the third of the six matches during this show. It is going to be Stars versus John. On this side, it is going to be Arisa Hoshiki, Starlight Kid, and Tam Nakano versus this side, which is Natsuko Tora, Kaori Yoniyama, and Ruka. Stars and John have always kind of had a bit of a rivalry with each other ever since the Stardom draft, where John was snubbed by them. This shows here where Natsuko and Tam once again, cannot put aside their personal differences and make it personal. Much to my delight. This whole match was super great. There wasn't a single downside to it, in my opinion. It continues a lot of things, like I said, with the Tam Natsuko, which I was worried that they were going to drop now that both of those are kind of in their own separate storylines now. Um, it also progresses the Tam Arisa conflict where they are able to kind of stand each other. I mean, Arisa never had a problem, but Tam did. So Tam now is able to at least somewhat put the, her differences beside, uh, which is progress. Another important thing happened in this match. Since Mayu is now injured and is not able to wrestle, the main event of the show was actually supposed to be for the tag belts with Saki and Mayu. Now, with Mayu injured, she needed a replacement. Tam winning this match... She asked Mayu if she could be the replacement. It kind of looks like for the time being, Tam is going to be taking Mayu's spot on the card, which is a surprise to me because I thought they would have given it to either Saki or Arisa. I am very happy, though, that Tam is getting the push that I feel like she deserves. Now on to the next match, one that I was personally really looking forward to, the high-speed title match. M you know, the champion, Mary Apache, versus the challenger, Hazuki. Important thing from this match, this belt has not been very relevant. It got put on Mary what seems like eons ago, and it kind of felt like it didn't even exist for most of it. She was either not even in stardom or Japan, or not doing anything with it, even when she was in Japan. So, it is nice to see, and spoilers, Hazuki win it. It is nice to see it on someone who is going to make it a legitimate belt again. This match was really great, and Hazuki really showed why she should be on everyone's watch list of 2019, because she is killing it lately, whether that be in, in the ring or on the mic. Unfortunately, there was one, I really wouldn't call it a downside, but one downside to this match, and that is the finish. It was a complete mess up, um, really brought down the impact of the final but that doesn't matter to me because the outcome of the match is more important to me in this match hazuki attempted what i can only assume to be a new finisher a shooting star press and landed straight on her neck it luckily going into it i knew that she wasn't injured so it didn't like i, I didn't get a squeamish feeling or whatever whenever i see someone land badly Luckily, she is completely fine from everything that I can see, and I know a lot of people have, I've seen a lot of people online say that they hope she never attempts it again. I'm on the opposite side. I hope she not only attempts it again, but makes it her main ultimate finisher, because not only will that put Hazuki in everyone's spotlight, it'll also show that women can do the amazing stunts that men can. 
she if she can pull this off, it's going to be amazing for both Stardom and Joshi Wrestling. After this match, Hazuki showed off more of the charisma she has gained since joining Odo Tai by basically manipulating the roster into getting her next challengers. And the two challengers that popped up were Azumi and Starlight Kid. Now, if you've seen this after match promo and you've read the comments that are associated with it online, like on Reddit, you will know that a lot of people tend to think that Azumi really outshined Starlight Kid in this segment. And while it is clear that Azumi is much more comfortable while doing things like this, I think it's unfair to say that Azumi outshined her. Uh, they're just two different kind of characters. Azumi is the brash, disrespectful brat who can give it as much as she takes. While Starlight Kid is supposed to be like the baby face of the company. I mean, she's, she's innocent and you kind of want to protect her in a way that uh, Mayu kind of was back, you know, in early 2016 and whatnot with her and Kyrie and Io, you, you with Starlight Kid you want to you want to see her succeed, but you don't want anything bad happening to her because it makes you feel bad like when you see a puppy get kicked. Where Azumi, she's kind of like that delinquent kid that kicks through the door and demands things and you're like, "Yeah, that's awesome." But so I think it's really hard to say that Azumi killed Starlight Kid in this. I think it's an unfair comparison. I can see where people are coming from, but I just don't agree. Alright, on to the fifth match, which could easily have been the main event in any other show. But it's not, so. This is going to be a fatal four-way. People in this match, it is Jungle Kiona, Kagetsu, Konami, and Hana Kimura. Now, you guys all know that I'm not a big fan of Hana, but don't worry. I actually really enjoyed this match, despite her. Towards the later half, she did way better than she's been doing recently, so if you are not a fan of Hannah either, don't worry, she doesn't ruin this match at all. I am a huge supporter of John and Jungle Kiona, so to not only see her win this match by pinning the current red belt holder, to also give out so much punishment and take so much punishment makes her look so incredibly strong after what I would describe as a kind of weak end of the year for her. Um, don't get me wrong, I've been loving her storyline of how she's, you know, she needs to regain her spark and all the drama she went through with Natsuko. Top notch, some of my best favorite, best favorite, some of my favorite things to happen this year. But it is nice to see her be dominant again. And that leads to her new outfit. In the beginning, I didn't know how to feel. I didn't know if I liked it, hated it. I decided to give it a little bit of time, but by the end of the match, I really liked it. I thought it was a pretty good change. Uh, it is kind of odd how every single new outfit she gets is a complete, like, completely different direction than the one she's currently wearing. Uh, I am curious to know why she decided to not only change the whole style of it, but to also change her color scheme. Either way, I'm a big fan of her new outfit, and I do look forward to seeing more of it next year. And at the end of this match, Jungle challenges for the red belt, which Kagetsu has accepted. I might be a little hasty in saying this, but I do believe that 2019 is going to be the year of Jungle, and I really hope that she wins this belt here. Um, that would make Kagetsu's reign with the red belt not very long, and or having many defenses, but... I feel like Kagetsu is going to leave behind more than just what belts she held. While Jungle really needs this right now, she has for a very long time been considered one of the top four. Even then, it's always kind of felt like top three with her right next to them. It, she's never really gotten the accolades or the renown that I believe she deserves. So, I'm not only predicting that she's going to win the red title from Kigetsu in their title match, but I'm hoping that she goes on and defends it in some of the most hard-hitting and powerful matches we'll see next year. Next match, 
It's the main event, and it definitely felt like it. It is the Goddesses of Stardom title match with the champions Utami Hayashishita and Momo Watanabe versus the challengers Saki Kashima and the replacement for Mayu Tam Nakano. I was I actually called the ending of this match very early on. I felt like with the amount of time they had to change who was going to be in the match, they might not have changed too much about it. Uh, if you guys are fans of the WWE, you might remember the Royal Rumble, the Women's Royal Rumble that we had last year, and how Kyrie Sane was originally not supposed to be in it. She was a last-minute call-up after Alicia Fox got injured, and the they didn't change anything about it except um, now Kyrie Sane was going to be the one that came in, fought for a little bit, and then got eliminated almost immediately. Um, as we all know, if it was actually meant for her originally, she would have either lasted much longer or done a lot more damage. And I felt like this match was going to be the exact same. I felt like Tam taking over Mayu's spot was going to be doing Tam, or Mayu's things. So she was not going to be taking the pin. Um, and she was not going to be in it for very much. Mayu tends to be in it for not as much of the match as her teammates, but she usually puts on a better show than her teammates, so it kind of counterbalances it. And I called it right from the beginning that I wanted Utami to pin Saki, mostly because I really wanted to see Utami's ultimate finisher that she came out with, which is the torture rack spin powerbomb type of maneuver that I kind of secretly really want her to start calling it the Queen of Hearts. I just felt like that would be a really cool name. I don't know what it's actually called. I haven't seen anybody say it yet. Uh, if it is, if it does actually already have a name, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear it. The best thing about this match is that everyone came out of this looking absolutely beastly. Saki can take a lot of punishment for how frail she looks. It's amazing how much damage she can take in a match and still make you believe that she can come back. It's truly astonishing. She's quickly becoming the star that I believe Stardom wanted her to be right from the beginning when she came back. I felt like she kind of floundered there for a bit, for a minute, but she is definitely where I feel she deserves to be right now. Momo and Tam, even though Tam is pulling double duty and this was her second match of the night, they both killed it. Their strikes are pretty much unmatched right now in stardom. I know Arisa's whole gimmick is that she's the best kicker in stardom type thing, but from what I've seen of her, she has a lot to go before she can surpass Momo and Tam. Tam has this elegance about her kicks, while Momo has the ability to make it look like she is actually trying to kick through people. Each one is very entertaining in their own way. And the star of the match, which was Utami, who got the final pin, she came out looking super strong. They decided to go the route of having her get beaten up a lot towards the end, but still power out and do an amazing move to get the pin. I think at one point she took like two signatures and then two finishers right in a row. And the only reason she didn't like end the match there is because Momo uh, interrupted the pin. And the last thing I want to talk about this match is that Utami actually got a new outfit. I was very curious about whether she's going to do this or not. Because one of the main reasons when she first started Stardom that I thought she might not join Queen's Quest was because she already had a gimmick, a hand sign, and a an amazing outfit right away. And if she joined Queen's Quest, pretty much all of that was going to disappear. Her hand sign is probably almost never going to get seen again. And everyone in Queen's Quest has leopard print on their outfit, so she would have had to have changed her outfit. Her joining Queen's Quest, I knew it was only a matter of time before she got a new outfit. And 
while I can see why a lot of people might be split on this outfit because there are some aspects on it that I could accurately describe as dumb, I am a fan of it. I actually really like it. In the beginning, I wasn't a fan, but by the end of the match, just like Jungles, I was all for it. I'm a complete supporter of the new outfit. I think it looks really good. And it's unique enough that it doesn't look like anybody else is on the roster. And she was able to implement the leopard print in a way that's not super obvious and noticeable, which is always my favorite thing because I, I'm not a fan of leopard print and or camo. I just think any kind of design like that looks really dumb. Everyone in Queen's Quest recently has found a way to perfectly implement the leopard print while also making it look stylish. And the way Utami did it was very good. Props to her and her designer. I don't know who designed it, whether it was her or someone else, but whoever designed it, I want to say good job because she looks really great. And we're at the end. Uh, this show was super great. A perfect send-off of the year. Not only did it put to rest some things like the flag and mask match, it also set up some things that make you want to come back. A perfect end-of-the-year match show. Perfect end-of-the-year show. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the show. I'm really looking forward to all of the interesting things that they are setting up for 2019. And once again, 2019, you're the jungle. Hopefully. Bye.